There we go. Okay, so I want to get Robert Carnick to go over to that light switch right there, and I want him to turn it on and off 10,000 times a second. <laughs> and while, while he's, yeah, that's because you're a good guy. So, but while he's doing that, I want him to leave it on for 10% and off for 90%, but do it 10,000 times a second. You ready? Uh, go. <laughs> that's just an analogy that I used. Uh, these are the early attempts to, at speed control. We tried resistors. If you do that, you've got to have such a high wattage. You could, you could cook hot dogs on it, you know, when you got into the lower speeds. We tried transformer tasks <coughs> used in the window control. Yeah, here's a resistor we used to use in the old days to control speed. And that thing would heat up and, and fail. And so, you know, the window control had transformer taps. You went from 15 to 30 to 45 to 60. It was always either too, too fast or too slow. The, do you have a 20, is that a 2160 gold box? Do you have one? Yeah, that's, well, that's, a good, that's the predecessor to the okay. gold box. Okay, so the early attempt, we used a light dimmer switch. And you'd always know if you were going through it because when the door opens, it would go Aah because what you were hearing was an AC hum that was produced by the, the phase control. The, the other problem was that you couldn't filter it because that, that was kind of a wicked waveform that destroyed capacitors. I remember when I first came to work here, we got a, a battery powered drill that had a speed control and it had like some steel mesh that when you pulled the trigger, more and more of the mesh uh, touched. I think it lasted about three days, but uh, so now, you know, now we've got something better. Modern electronics has obsoleted all these attempts. Go ahead, John. So what we do now, you hear the phrase PWM all the time. It's pulse width, pulse width modulation. Horton Control receives, you know, we've talked about we've got 120 volt DC coming from the power supply available to the control to use as, as it sees necessary. And we've talked about there's not a viable linear way to control the high current and we're looking for like 12 to 100 volts. And by the way, you, could, you can operate a 90 volt motor with a, with a 12 volt battery, but you don't have near the torque that you get when you, when you do with uh, using pulse width modulation. So I've already hit Robert with the analogy. So we're gonna use an electronic switch and the, the part that does that is called a MOSFET. That's a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. It's basically an electronically con controlled switch capable of going fully on and fully off at very fast speeds. And because it's neither, it's off and on, in between off and on such a brief amount of time, there's not much heat builds up, but we still have to, you know, put a pretty good heat sink <coughs> in them. Yeah. Go ahead, John. So the on-off frequency is referred to chop rate. And so we have to tell the pulse, we have to tell the machine, you know, I want you to turn it on and off 10,000 times a second. We do that with an oscillation circuit, also called the chop rate. Now, what Horton uses is, is 10 kilohertz, and that's supposed to be higher than what the human ear can detect. But we have people that can hear, you know, John can hear, I can't, I can't, you know, I can hear, barely hear myself talk, but Our the, talks might talk, right? yeah. So the door in my office that you saw is held open all day that I'm there. And so the, the thing is basically in low speed being held open and people walk in and they, you know, they look, what is it? We're, we're working on doubling that to, to 2000. We have 12 prototypes being tested out in uh, uh, where? Yeah, in Vancouver. They've got a real quiet laboratory in a, in a college and we've, we've got 12 of them out there. I think it's gonna work and we may go to that, uh, but we've just been with the 10 kilohertz for so long that uh, we knew it worked. So, uh, next slide, John. So here, you know, when we talk about 12 volts DC, we look at it, our meter and we think it's 12 volts, but what you're actually seeing is a square wave that's on 10% of the time and off 90, on 10, off 90. And the, the good news is that instead of being like 12 volts to your motor, you're hitting it with 100 volts 
over and over again for a short duration. So you get a lot better low-end torque and uh, you use less power and all that sort of stuff. So this would be a 10% duty cycle. There's 30%, here's 50, it's basically on half the time, off half the time. And then when you get up into the, the high range, you see the sh what a short amount of time it's, it's actually off. Go ahead, John. So the microprocessor is what's sending, we're getting a pulse width modulation. So you've got the 120 volts sitting there, you know, waiting to be fed to the control. And this MOSFET, think of it as a switch, is turning it on and off 10,000 times a second, and then it goes to the motor from there. So if the microprocessor asks it to run at 10% duty cycle, you get about a 12 volt <coughs> output. Go ahead, John. So the other thing we've got to do, we've got to control the direction. We've talked about how if you reverse the motor leads, that you basically reverse the direction of the motor. So what we're looking at is a, this is a, a relay. You've got normally open and normally closed contacts, and it's a double pole relay. So right now, the 120 volts is going through there, through that contact, back there, and back to, back to zero. If we energize that coil, this would move there, and that would move there, and the thing would reverse. So it, we'd, everything except for the 3150 has a, that is power open, power closed, has a, a relay on it. Go ahead. So John, was, uh, John Kringle was also talking about what else do we, do we use dynamic braking. So we were talking about putting the motor leads together to short it. We can do the same thing with this switch. You got your motor leads going, going through a duty cycle to the motor. So you can have a 10% braking, 20% braking, 50, you know, and you can uh, adjust all that with via the control. So, so how do you get it from, you know, the pulse width to the control? 4190 swing door control, which we've got one over there, uses three different potentiometers that change the duration of the pulse. You've got the open speed, open check, and hold. And they're adjusted the speeds that you want for that particular, uh, for that particular mode of operation. So the control logic, select, you know, when you're going in the full open position, the control logic selects the speed thing, drives open until the open check switch trips, and then it goes to the check, whatever you uh, adjusted the check speed to. And then when the door gets in the full open position, you use a hold potentiometer to hold it fully against the internal stop. So that's, that is a potentiometer based thing. Go ahead, John. So, on the 2150, we take that 100, 120 volts of DC, and it's a little bit crude on the 2150. We divide it into 160 force, which is about 1.8 1, 1 volt per, per, per division. Now you notice on the, on the 2150, your speeds are set from zero to six to 15, which is, gives you 16 different things. And they're not all the same. Go ahead and turn the page. So your open speed is, is going to be the fastest. So zero on the open speed is going to be maybe 664, whereas 15 would be 6464. And so the microprocessor says, OK, I want you to open the door and look at this table and decide you know, where the technician has set it. And I want you to run the, the motor at 3264 of full speed until we get to open check, and then we're going to change it to 1064, and then the open check, you know, so it, the computer tells the motor what speed to run in at what mode. All right. 3150 is a little bit different. We, we don't have just 16 ranges now. We can select anywhere from 10 to 97% and there'll be a factory default. Now, you're not gonna be able to close it as fast as you can open it. So these are the, the factory default, and then you can go up to 56%. This one you can take to 90. So these are the ranges that you can adjust this. This is what it, when you first set it up, this is what it sets uh, 
the defaults to. And again, the computer says, okay, we're in open speed. They want it to be 75% and it calls that up and, and delivers it to the control. Does the 3150 have uh, inbuilt learning for this? It does. No, I mean, um, as people, as traffic moves. No. no. It's whatever you set it to. Uh, open speed, open check, open cushion, just like, just like a 2150. So you don't have a potentiometer limit? No. You have uh, parameters, digital parameters, which is cool because you get a lot better control. Now this is kind of high level stuff, but I, I think it's cool and so I'll, I'll take a few minutes to talk to you about it. On the 2150, we drive the door open at whatever pulse rate we wanted and then we, we break it. But if you didn't break it, the door just continued to coast and hit the bumper and bang and, and whatever. So you, it's like uh, if you're driving a car, you hit the accelerator and then the brake. On an H-bridge, it's a little bit like having one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. And you're always doing one or the other. <coughs> it eliminates the need for a, for a relay. And it also gives you a lot smoother control. You get better braking and better driving. So if you think of, this is your 20, 120 volts that we've delivered to the control. Think of these as toggle switches, like light switches. And so, Limit switches. Not, not the, just like any kind of a switch, light switch, knife switch, it doesn't matter. Just think of this transistor as a switch, you know, a simple switch for, to make it easy to, to, to understand. Next, next slide, John. So when we're running one direction, the 120 volts comes in, this switch is closed, so it goes through that switch, to the motor and it goes to the opposite switch which is closed and then goes to ground. So your motor runs in a clockwise uh, rotation. Next slide. To reverse it, you do the opposite. You go through that switch, it's closed, and that switch to close. So now you've been able to reverse, now you're going counterclockwise. Go ahead and give me the next slide. And so if we're gonna brake, We've talked about shorting the motor leads together. So here's your motor. This switch is closed and that switch is closed. So you've got a dead short between your motor, which is a dynamic braking all from this single uh, H-bridge. Okay, so now if we send this thing a pulse width modulation, now not only are we controlling the direction, but we're controlling the duty cycle by de determining which, you know, you can still run them either direction, but instead of getting 120 volts full, full smoke, you're getting whatever the control decides that it wants to be opening at. Now that's it, right? Yes, sir. All right.